Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders of $10 or more, and help with the channel at the same time. You could also consider turning off your ad blocker when watching my videos. Today's game is a bit of an oldie, but it's got a brand new general and some old friends, so let's get into it. In today's game, I'm playing Tristani, and I keep two forests, Cultivate, Loaming Shaman, Zendikar Resurgence, Tectonic Edge, and Regal Behemoth. Jameson is playing his Traxa deck and keeps Command Tower, Mana Vault, Garuk Primal Hunter, Teferi Temporal Archmage, Beseech the Queen, Janny Steadfast, and Arena Rector. Eric is playing Traxos and keeps a Mana Crypt, Mirage Mirror, Paradox Engine, Wastes, Rashidian Port, Blink Moth Nexus, and Death Renderer. Evil Adam is playing Jadit Ojenin and testing out some cards for what eventually would become his Arcades deck. His opener has two planes, a maze of ith, a sunscape familiar, an island, a psychic membrane, and a reinforced bulwark. I win the die roll, and I start us off. I play a forest, and I pass. Jameson plays a command tower, and casts mana vault. Eric plays a waste, and he casts a mana crypt. He then taps the crypt to cast lightning greaves, and pass his turn. Evil Adam plays a planes, and passes. I play a forest, and I pass my turn. Jameson plays an island, and he casts Soul Ring. He then pays 4 to cast a Janny Steadfast, and upticks his walker, passing to Eric. Eric rolls for his Mana Crypt, and fails, taking 3. He then plays a Blink Moth Nexus, and casts Traxos. Eric equips the Greaves onto Traxos, but I destroy Eric's commander with the Nature's Claim before the boots get anywhere near it. Eric gains 4 life, so if anything, the turn has been good for him because he's gained 1 more life than he started with. Adam plays an island, and he casts Sunscape Familiar. I play Tectonic Edge, and I cast a Cultivate. I find a Plains for the field, and one for my hand. Jameson takes one in his upkeep from the Vault Trigger, and pays four to cast an Arena Rector. Jameson then upticks a Johnny to give the Rector plus one plus one, First Strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink, but it can't attack, so he passes. Eric rolls for his Mana Crypt Trigger, and doesn't take any damage. He plays a Rashad in Port, and he casts a Paradox Engine before passing to Adam. Adam plays a Plains, and he casts Psychic Membrane. I draw for turn, and I play a Plains. I then pay 2 mana of each, and I cast Tristani. Jameson pays for his Mana Vault trigger on his upkeep, and then upticks his Johnny in his main phase. He puts the pump ability on the Rector, but doesn't attack and passes. Eric misses the damage from his Crypt roll again, and plays one of the Urza lands. He then recasts Traxos, and untaps his Mana Crypt thanks to the Paradox Engine trigger. Eric then casts Skull Clamp using the Crypt, which untaps Traxos and the Mana Crypt as well. With the one mana still floating from his crypt, Eric equips the Skull Clamp onto Traxos and then the Greaves. Eric swings Traxos at Ajani, and Jameson puts the Rector in front of it. The Rector dies, and Ajani drops to 1 from the Trample damage. Jameson then exiles the Rector as it dies, and goes to find a Planeswalker. Eric in the meantime casts a Mirror Retriever in his second main phase, which untaps everything but his lands, and he passes. Adam plays a Planes and casts Fortified Ramparts. Jameson finally decides to grab Baby Jace Bellerin, and Adam passes. I play a Command Tower, and cast Ulvenwald Hydra. I resolve the Land Search trigger first, finding a Mirror Pool, and then gain 7 life from Tristani's trigger. Moving to combat, I swing Tristani at Johnny to take the Planeswalker out. Jameson casts a Thran Temporal Gateway in his main phase, as he's been struggling for lands, and cheating things out seems good. He then upticks Jace to let everyone draw, and then activates the Gateway to put out a Gruk Primal Hunter. Jameson upticks Gruk to make a 3-3 Beast token, and passes to Eric. Eric takes 3 from his Mana Crypt trigger, and plays a Cathedral of War as his land for turn. Moving to combat, he swings Traxos at Adam for 9 general damage. Eric then casts a Mirage Mirror in his second main phase, and untaps his non-lands. He then moves the Skull Clamp onto the Mirror Retriever, drawing 2 but is unable to return anything, and passes to Adam. Adam plays an Island and casts Wall of Frost. He follows up with another Wall, Reinforced Bulwark, and passes turn. I play a Rogue's Passage for my turn, and I pay 6 to cast Regal Behemoth. This makes me the Monarch, and I gain 5 more life from Tristani. I then cast Panharmonicon, and move to my end step. I draw from being the Monarch, and I pass to Jameson. Jameson takes 1 in his upkeep, and draws for turn. He activates the Gateway, and puts out Teferi Temporal Archmage, and upticks Garuk to make another beast. He then upticks Chase, and the table draws a card. Jameson then uses Teferi's first minus ability, and untaps 4 permanents. He then pays 7 to cast an Overloaded Cyclonic Rift in his main phase, and all of his opponents bounce their permanents to their hands. 
Eric plays a quicksend as a land for turn, and he recasts Mana Crypt. He pays 5 to cast Paradox Engine, and then casts a Mox Opal and untaps his Crypt. He then pays 3 to cast Mirage Mirror, untapping his Rocks. Eric then pays 3 mana to have his Mirror become a copy of the Mana Vault, and taps his Rocks to cast Thraxos again. This untaps his Rocks once more, with 2 floating, and he retaps the Rocks before casting Lightning Greaves. This untaps the mana rocks even more, with more colors floating, and Eric then taps them again, casting Karn, Sign of Urza. He untaps them once more. Eric then upticks Karn, and Adam gives Eric the Temple of False God. Eric then casts Deathrender, and keeps floating more and more colors mana. He animates the Blink Moth Nexus, and gears up Thraxos to the Deathrenderer first, followed by the Lightning Greaves. He swings Thraxos at Teferi, and the Blink Moth at me. Jameson lets Teferi die, and I take 1 damage. Eric then becomes the Monarch, having dealt combat damage to me, and plays a Skull Clamp in his second main phase. He then equips the Clamp onto the Blink Moth Nexus, drawing two as it dies. Eric then moves to his end step, drawing a card, and passing to Adam. Adam plays a Maze of Vith, and then replays Sunscape Familiar. He replays the Wall of Frost, and passes. I play a Forest, and cast Zendikar Resurgence. I then tap two lands to recast Tristani, drawing from her being cast. I discard two cards, and I pass to Jameson. Jameson takes one in his upkeep from the mana vault being tapped, and plays a forest. He then down ticks Jace to only allow himself to draw a card, and he makes another beast token with Garuk. Jameson then casts Beseech the Queen, paying 5 mana for it, and goes to tutor for a card. Jameson grabs Pernicious Deed, and puts it to his hand. Moving to combat, he swings one of the beasts at Eric, and one at Karn. Eric blocks the one being swung at him, and Karn loses 3 loyalty counters. Eric takes 3 from his mana crypt failure, and upticks Karn in his main phase. Evil Adam gives Eric one of the lands he reveals, and Eric plays a Dread Sanctuary. Moving to combat, Eric swings Traxos to Jameson, who blocks some of the damage with one of his beast tokens, and takes 7 commander damage. Eric then floats 3 colorless mana, and he casts Mox Diamond, but doesn't discard a land. The Mox Diamond goes to the graveyard, and his mana rocks on tap. Eric then floats more mana with his mana rocks, and animates the Dread Sanctuary, moving the Greaves onto it so he can put the Skull Clamp onto Traxos. Eric then moves the Greaves back onto Traxos, and he passes to Adam, drawing at the end of his turn. Adam plays a Plains, and he recasts Psychic Membrane. He then plays a Reinforced Bulwark, and passes turn. I draw for my turn, and I recast Regal Behemoth. I become the Monarch once more, and I gain another 5 life, but I forget to draw a card off casting it. I then cast Panharmonicon, and recast Ulvenwald Hydra. I stack my triggers to resolve my two Ulvenwald Hydra searches, then my two Tristani triggers. I grab a Forest and Reliquary Tower, and then gain 11 twice. I then cast Kadama's Reach, finding a Forest for the field, and a Plains for my hand. Moving to my end step, I draw from being the Monarch, and I pass turn. Jameson loses one in his upkeep to his Mana Vault trigger, and loses two more when he plays an untapped Hollowed Fountain. Jameson then casts Pernicious Deed. He upticks his Jace to make us all draw a card to distract us while he pays 5 into Pernicious Deed's activated ability. With the ability on the stack though, Eric activates his Mirage Mirror to make it become a copy of Maze of Ith. Jameson then upticks Garuk to make another beast token after the deeds has resolved, and he passes to Eric. Eric places Temple of the False God, and upticks Karn picking Adam again. Adam gives Eric the Phyrexian Revoker, and Eric casts his own Mana Vault. He taps the Vault to cast a Semblance Anvil, exiling an Everflowing Chalice to make all of his artifacts cost 2 less. Eric then recasts Traxos, and then drops the Revoker he'd been given, naming Garuk Primal Hunter as it enters the battlefield. Evil Adam casts a Wall of Glare in his main phase, and then plays a Wall of Water, and passes turn. I play Sungrass Prairie, and need to only tap 2 lands for 6 mana, using 5 of it to cast Mirari's Wake. I then cast Green Warden Marassa to return Panharmonicon to my hand, then cast it. Moving to combat, my Hydra goes at Eric, who blocks with the Revoker. In my second main phase, I cast Harmonize to draw 3 cards. I then pass turn, drawing at my end step thanks to the Monarch trigger. Jameson plays a Vivid Creek as his land for turn, and casts an Oath to Fairy, flickering one of his lands until the end of turn. Jameson then upticks Garuk to make a beast token, and with the oath out, then down ticks Garuk to use his ultimate and gain 6 6 6 worms. Jameson then upticks Jace to have the table draw a card, and then does it once more to have everyone draw a card again. Eric takes one in his upkeep, and draws for turn, and then upticks his Karn, picking Adam once more. 
Adam gives him another Tron land, while Eric exiles Felwar Stone with Karn. He then has his Mirage Mirror become a copy of the Mana Vault, and he taps out to cast Kozlik the Great Distortion. Eric sadly has already 7 cards in hand, so he doesn't draw more, and he passes to Evil Adam. At the end of turn though, I cast Swords to Plowshares targeting the Kozilek to see if I can get through some of the counters Eric will be throwing out. But to my surprise, the sword resolves and Eric exiles the Eldrazi, gaining 12 life. Adam plays an island for his turn and he casts Dazzling Ramparts in his first main phase. He then drops a Fortified Ramparts and he passes turn. At the end of turn, I sacrifice my Mirror Pool to get a token copy of Ulvenwald Hydra, gaining 2 Enter the Battlefield triggers and searching for 2 lands. I grab a Blighted Woodlands and a Temple of Plenty, scrying the top card after I'm done shuffling. I then bottom the card and recast Restoration Angel, drawing from the cast trigger from my Resurgence. I bounce both the Green Warden and the Ulvenwald Hydra, and I return Mirror Pool and Swords to Plowshares to my hand, and then go and grab Crocent Verge and Riftstone Portal. For my turn, I activate my Rogue's Passage to give the real copy of Ulvenwald Hydra unblockable. I then swing it at Eric for 17 points of damage. In my second main phase, I cast an Avenger of Zendikar, and I draw a card from casting it. I then gain a boatload of tokens since I get two Enter the Battlefield triggers thanks to Panharmonicon, and I pass to Jameson. Jameson plays an Exotic Orchard, and I remember I should have drawn at the end of my turn. Jameson then makes a Beast token with Garuk, and sacrifices it as part of the cost of Diabolic Intent. He tutors for a card, and then upticks Jace to let everyone draw, and does it again thanks to the Oath to Fairy. Jameson then activates Garuk to make a Beast, and passes turn. Eric loses one in his upkeep to his Mana Vault trigger, and Jameson casts an Enlightened Tutor. Eric plays a Strip Mine for his land for turn, before turning his Mirage Mirror into a Mana Vault. He then taps the Mirage Mirror Mana Vault for 3 mana, and he casts Sensei's Divining Top. He then upticks Karn, and Adam gives him the Darksteel Ingot. Eric uses one of the Floating Mana to activate his top, and he then casts the Darksteel Ingot. He then activates the top to put it on top of his library, and he draws a card, before casting a Junk Diver. Eric then casts a Crucible of Worlds, and uses Strip Mine to take up my Mirror Pool. Evil Adam plays a Plains, and he casts some obscure wall I can't identify. We then see more walls hit the field, which I guess is neat. At the end of turn, I cycle Tranquil Thicket to draw a card. I play a Forest for my turn, and all of my plant tokens gain a plus one plus one counter. I then tap a few lands, because I got mana for days, and I cast Helm of the Hosts, and equip it onto the Ulvenwald Hydra. Moving to combat, the helm gives me an Ulvenwald Hydra token, I get to go find two lands, which means my plant tokens get two plus one plus one counters, and I swing enough at Eric and enough at Adam to take them both out. Adam and Eric both get taken out, and in my second main phase I cast Woodfall Primus, drawing a card and blowing up Jameson's Vivid Stream and a Plains. Jameson draws for his turn, and down takes Garuk to use his first minus ability, drawing six cards. He then plays a Woodland Cemetery, and upticks Garuk to make another Beast token. Jameson then upticks Jace, so that he and I can draw a card, and then uses Baby Jace's ultimate to mill me for 20. Jameson then casts Farseek to go and find a land, and Adam reveals his win condition, Divine Intervention. Jameson grabs a Godless Shrine, and discards down to 7. He asks Eric about a card, while I untap my land. I cast See the Unwritten, and most definitely have the Ferocious Claws met. I reveal the top 8, and I keep Vito Gazi Guildmage and a Fierce Empath. I get 2 search triggers from the Empath hitting the field with my Panharmonicon out, and I grab a Nemiria Shepherd and choose not to find a second creature. I then cast the Nemiria Shepherd, and then play a Plains. This brings out my Aetherflux Reservoir from the Nemiria Shepherd trigger, and Eric reminds me that my Avenger of Zendikar gets another trigger, and all of my plants gain another plus 1 plus 1 counter. I'm quite overconfident at this point, and I pay 50 life to deal 50 damage to Jameson with my Aetherflux Reservoir, who unfortunately for me, has a perfect counter for it with a comeuppance. Unfortunately, I learned too late that I should have just attacked him, and I die, and Jameson wins. So there were two major oversights in this game, the first of which was Adam having died from my combat step. If he'd read his card, the Wall of Glare could actually have prevented all of my tokens, and he would have lived through that combat step. Truth be told though, this deck was basically just waiting for him to get his Arcades in the mail so that he could build that deck instead, and I'm pretty sure he was just tired of playing walls by the end of the game. Admittedly, I probably should have attacked before using the Aetherflux Reservoir, and that cost me the game in the end with the comeuppance. I won't say that I should always expect comeuppance, but I probably could have been more conservative and used my creatures first, and then use the Aetherflux Reservoir had I needed it. Eric was pretty upset that I used Nature's Claim to take out Traxos so early on in the game, but considering his commander came out on turn 2, and how often he was able to untap it by casting zero-cost artifacts, I think the game would have gone very differently had he been left alone. 
Jameson did build a Traxxas Super Friends like many people before him, but he does run a lot of mass removal like Deed and Disc to deal with all kinds of troublesome permanents, but not touch his planeswalkers. Plus, I gotta give him kudos, cause using comeuppance against Aetherflux Reservoir is pretty spicy. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.